If you will play from a copy of a tune and a choppy, you'll get all my applause. And that is perfect because I want to listen to So we talked about doing molar trims, and now we're on to jaw abscess surgeries. And with jaw abscesses, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. There's, you can have abscesses of the upper jaws or of the lower jaws. The lowers are definitely a lot easier to do than the uppers. The uppers, you're dealing with the eye, a lot more blood supply and nerves, and you know it, it's just very condensed in there. And so um, basically here, um, this rabbit is, is intubated uh, with a breathing tube. And you can see his abscess here that's been shaved. And then this is an intra-op picture. Uh, this was actually Dr. Richards performing the surgery. And so the rabbit is under here. There's a we you know clipped and cleaned it. You know got it as sterile as we could, almost like we were doing a, a belly surgery. And then we put a, a sterile drape over it, so it's all covered up except for the part that we're working on. And then um, this is the special. Um, uh, retractor device that helps to keep the abscess open because what we do is we make an incision, we cut in, we scoop out pus and you basically follow the pus to the bad tooth. And sometimes people, what they do is they just, oh, they'll just sedate the rabbit and lance the abscess and give them antibiotics. That works in a small number of cases, but most of the time it's going to come back because the abscess is there because there's a infected tooth root. And that infected tooth root rarely responds to just antibiotics. If that tooth root is infected, it has to come out to cure the abscess. Okay, and so that there are a lot of other vets who are doing some jaw abscess surgeries, and then when the abscess comes back, they come to me, and then I can do, you know, the proper surgery where we're going in and we're removing all of the bad tissue, mm -hmm. and, you know, and that's the key thing for a successful jaw abscess surgery is removing all the abnormal tissue and abnormal teeth. Okay, so we go in there, we clean out the pus, we find the tooth or teeth that are involved. Also, based on our x-rays, we know where to look. We remove those teeth, clean everything out. It's hard to see, but this is just kind of getting some pus out of our incisions. And... Um, we clean it out, we place antibiotic beads, which are little pieces of bone cement that are going to give us antibiotics for about two months. We Usually we will suture it closed. Some people, some vets will, suit, will leave it open and maybe have the owners flushing it. Um, if you're getting everything out, you know, and I used to do that, I used to leave it open and then I realized if I was more aggressive and I got all of the bad stuff out, it was going to heal up because there was no, no more bad stuff. But if you're leaving some bad stuff in, then whether you close it or not, it's going to start oozing pus. And so that's why I, was, I, I learned how to be more aggressive and, you know, talking to specialists or, you know, who've been doing it for ages. And so, so you get in there, you get everything bad out, put some antibiotics in, and I close it. And we usually have extremely good um, uh, healing after that, you know, with if the, some of the other doctors who are leaving it open, it takes longer for it to heal too. So if, even if it doesn't grow, get infected again, it just, you know, flushing and healing, it can take a few more weeks. This is just a, a picture of like a week or two later of the incision and how it looks. So um, it, it's hard to say if this was one that was, um, had been flushed and had healed from the inside out or if this is just a scab left over um, post-op. Pr it's probably the, the, the first thing I said because usually a couple weeks after my surgeries, it's just a nice tiny little incision that's all healed up. So, okay, and then, so, okay, so here's the, where they marsupialize. The marsupialization means basically leaving it open, kind of like a pouch. So, um, so here somebody had uh, cleaned out the abscess and then just sutured it open like that for continued flushing afterwards. And then this was a rabbit where, I think he was an older bunny, but the owner didn't have a lot of money. And so she couldn't afford the ideal jaw abscess surgery, which can be quite pricey um, because we're doing so much and, and it's such so uh, intense and, uh, and you need a lot of skills and everything. So, so sometimes if the owner can't afford the, the best surgery, we'll do the, you know, we'll, we'll do the marsupialization. And so we just gave this bunny some um, sedative 
So he just sat there. He didn't care what we were doing, but he wasn't fully anesthetized. He was breathing well on his own, no problem. And then I used, we shaved it. I put, injected a local anesthetic in there so he wasn't feeling anything. And then that way I was able to clean out all of that pus. And there was also another swelling here down around his cheekbone. And so I made an incision there, cleaned that pus out. And then this is immediately afterwards where I sutured the edges of the tissue to the skin to keep it open a little bit longer where and we were flushing it out and so so sometimes I'll do that if it's either if there's it's a money concern and we're like well we can try it and see if this does the trick and if it comes back then we know we have to do the full anesthesia thing um, the other option is sometimes rabbits just have to stay on antibiotic the rest of their life because as soon as you take them off antibiotic the abscess comes back so um, and then plus you know also sometimes we'll do the marsupialization if it's a very debilitated rabbit that can't undergo surgery or an older rabbit which you you know like a 10 year old and you're like mm, maybe I don't want to put them under anesthesia and then this is just a picture it's a little blurry of you know something like that just healing up you know like a couple weeks later insurance, insurance if you get the insurance before it happens then um, then it covers some of it. It depends. I think at the start it may cover like half, and then if it's a chronic issue, they'll cover less and less over time. They have a limit of how much they're going to cover, um, and you definitely want to get insurance before a, a problem is identified because if you try to get insurance after a, a, a jaw abscess is diagnosed, then they're not going to want to cover it. Yeah, so. And it's pretty inexpensive to get, and sometimes it just helps a lot, you know, and you can get a lot of money, so it varies. I want to listen to, I want to listen to, I want to listen to a rap.